Today we're going to be looking at incredibly fast ways that we can filter lists and also the cleanest ways that we can filter the lists in Python. And there are several ways to do this, but I'm going to be covering the two most popular and one is using list comprehensions while the other one is using the filter function. So let's go ahead and find out which one looks cleaner and which one's actually faster. So to continue with this example, I went ahead and created my own filtering function, which returns either true or false. And all it does is check whether a string contains the letter A. It doesn't matter if it's uppercase or lowercase. It just checks that the string contains A and it returns either true or false depending on whether it contains A or not. But now we can go ahead and go inside our if name is equal to main. And here we have a list of people, Elon, Mark, Jeff, and Mario. And of course we should get Mark and Mario as a return when we filter this list. So the first way we're going to do it is with a list comprehension. So new list is going to equal person for person in people if contains A and we will insert the person. Then we can go ahead and print the new list. Now, if we go ahead and run this, we should get only Mark and Mario back because again, we are checking that the person does contain the letter A before adding it to the list comprehension. And while this approach is quite simple and very Pythonic, I personally think it is quite ugly. It does require us to write a lot of text that we can easily avoid using filter. So let's go ahead and create the filter equivalent. So here we'll type in new list two. And instead of adding the list comprehension, we're going to use the built in filter function. And here we need to insert the function which takes an input and that returns either true or false. So here we're going to add contains a and we're going to use the people on this filter function. Now what I like about this filter function is that we don't have to repeat any of the variables. We just have the list here that we want to filter and the filter that we want to apply to it. But the drawback is that we do need to convert this into a list if we want to print it. So if we go ahead and print this, we need to go ahead and create a list from the new list too. And when we print it, we're going to get the exact same output. So for a lot of people who use Python, they're probably still going to prefer using this approach because it's very easy to read and it's highly Pythonic. But I think you should judge for yourself which one feels more comfortable because filter looks really good by itself, although it does require us to create a list later. So if we were to do something like this, I would say this approach looks really ugly. But if we just print it like this, it's perfectly fine. We do not need to convert it to a list to use this list because it does return to us an iterable. It just does not return to us a list. So if we were to do something such as for person in new list two, print person, we're going to get the people back even if we didn't create a new list. It's only when we want to actually print it as a list that we need to convert it to a list. So that was just a basic example on how clean they look and how you can use them. But let's go ahead and also check how fast they are. So, I mean, this is a lot of code that I've pasted in, so I'm going to explain it. And we don't need these functions. Uh, we don't need this one. This is the one I just showed you guys, which is how to use the filter function. And if we remove that, we will now have two functions that we're going to test. And it's going to use the list from the previous tutorial when we were using map, except this time we're going to use the filter version. So for the list comprehensions, we're going to check whether the person for person in people contains A for that person. And if it does, we're going to add it to the list comprehension. And the filter test is going to do exactly the same thing, except it's going to use the filter function and return a list of the new people. Then just as in the previous video, I have a timing function which checks the speed and it tests the function 100,000 times and it repeats that test 10 times. So we should have 1 million executions of the function and it's going to store all of those in an array and it's going to return to us the fastest time that that function executed. And it's going to do this for both of the functions. And then I went ahead and actually used these functions to check the filter speed for the filter test and the list comprehension speed for the list comprehensions test. And we're going to calculate which one's faster. And it's very important that they print the same output to make sure that the test is accurate. But if we go ahead and run this, it's going to first say that the filter took about 0.05 seconds while the list comprehension took 
0.06 so it's around 16 percent faster and if we rerun that we're going to get the results more or less the same no matter how many times we rerun that and it's very similar to the map function now this optimization might not change anything in your program it still depends a lot on the context where you use it but to wrap this video up use a filter if it is very simple otherwise go for the list comprehension it really depends on the context whether this is going to be faster in your program so don't be afraid to test it out but in general if you're using python try to use what's more pythonic and what you find cleaner in this case i find filter to be incredibly clean because we only have one condition that we need to check for if you have multiple or it gets any more complicated, I would definitely try to find an alternative. And yeah, with that being said, as always, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson.